Welcome back to Let's Clean Power Wash Simulator. I'm Burning Dog Face, and once again, we are jumping onto the Ring of Iron and working on a Thunderhawk. Actually, I made quite a bit more progress than I thought last time. I was in the teens when I started, and I'm at 44% now. So, hey, go me! On the other hand, I did also upload episode 84 twice in a row instead of uploading episode 85, so that was embarrassing. Um, yeah, I've taken care of that now, but ooh, don't love that. It's gonna itch at me for a while that, uh, <laughs> well, that the, uh, the videos are out of order in my timeline when I go to the, uh, you know, control panel. Although, I've gotten over that before. I really wanted the first episode of uh, Let's Play Halo 1 to be the... Uh, well, the first gameplay episode. So I actually uploaded that slightly before episode 0, the one with the manual explanation in it. I'd also like to mention, hey, happy St. Patrick's Day, because it is, you know, the, the Sunday uh, as I'm recording this. I forgot to mention that last time. Although, as I look at my calendar here, I see that, uh, apparently St. Patrick's Day is on to, uh, Monday the 18th in Newfoundland, the, uh, the province of Canada. So to any Newfies in the audience, happy St. Patrick's Day now! <laughs> Still made it. Let's see here. Before I get started into this, shout out to Elthwar, who says, I don't think the Ogrin would have survived if they weren't so accepting of the Emperor. To be fair, however, I don't think the Imperium would tolerate baseline, non-mutant, non-psychic humans who also do not accept the Emperor. I like that. For example, I'd never heard of this before, by the way, before I get into this. For example, the Inter-X was an advanced, non-Imperial human civilization that existed at the time of the Great Crusade, which chose to coexist with aliens, even integrating them into its own society. Yeah, this isn't gonna end well. It also used AIs and educated people about the dangers of chaos, which they spelled with a K, not a CH, and so they were skeptical of Imperium of the Imperium when it arrived. They were destroyed completely by the Imperium after the Interex accused them of stealing a dangerous warp technology weapon from a museum. They were partially right, since one of the members of the diplomatic uh, diplomatic talks was Erebus, one, if not the first space marine to turn to chaos and the one to steal the weapon, though most of the rest of the diplomatic party did not know about it. Harsh. Apparently they, uh... Yeah, I looked into that. Apparently they were real close to the, uh... an ape-like alien race called the, what was it, Kinebrock? And, uh... that species went extinct at around the same time the Interrex ceased to exist. So, yeah, 40k, everybody. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, let's bring that up a bit. Shout out to Justin Jones, who says, An amusing twist ending to this DLC would be for Trazen the Infinite to show up and transport Engine Seer Power Wash to his domain. Uh, yes, Trazen the Infinite is a Necron with a very uh, eccentric hobby where he just collects things. He has this vast like planet somewhere that's just covered in things he has collected, ranging from rare pieces of technology from all the factions to people he has preserved in stasis, like fucking museum pieces. <laughs> Man. Uh, yes, there, Trazen would make our devoted tech adept a deal, clean his entire collection in exchange for his freedom. The catch, and there is always a catch with Trazen, is that he is always adding to his collection. Oh boy. Let's see, where were we? I believe we were going at this, this mess up here. Did I get the wing last time? Oh, I didn't quite get the full main wing. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Hang on, I'll stab that right there. Next to it. Oh, right. I forgot that resets every time, just like the ladders do. Okay, where were we? Am 
my understanding of the chaos thing was that they did indeed tell their citizens about chaos. Like, the deep knowledge was still a crime, of course, but uh, they wanted- they let them know just enough to know that if they start to encounter chaos stuff, they should turn around and run the other way. <laughs> oh, no, I recognize this. We need to get the fuck out of here. I wonder if they explained the part about knowledge being bad, in that case. What do they call it? It's kind of like the ultimate version of the Streisand effect. The more you learn about chaos, the more likely you are to fall to chaos. And if you warn your people not to look into chaos, that will cause some of them to do it! Facing right. I checked this time. Aha. Oh wait. Ha! Got it in the first try that time. Oh yeah, this whole thing. Missile pylon, excellent. Oh yes, and the underside of the wing, this is important. Learned about a couple games I, uh... One of them I'd forgotten about, and one of them I hadn't heard of before, where they focus on, uh, the orcs. So that was interesting. You know, because, uh, one of the complaints, of course, is that there's a lot more focus on the Imperium than the other factions, although in fairness I will point out that there are, like, five or six different armies within the Imperium. Yeah, there's a couple games that focus entirely on the orcs. Uh, one of them is called Speed Freaks, both words having two E's in them. And, uh... It's a combat racing game, because of course it fucking is. It's what a group of orcs, who I guess exist in the lore, who are considered weirdos by the rest of the orcs, because they find going really, really, really fast and even more entertaining than murdering people. still a combat racing game, it's not like they've sworn up of violence or anything insane like that. The other one... Uh... Oh, nice. Well, there was a 2D, uh platforming action game that came out a while back, uh, where you played as, I think, uh, I think the idea was you played as mafia guys fighting the zombie apocalypse. 
All very tongue-in-cheek. It was called Guns, Gore, and Cannoli. And I bring that mess up because uh, the same developers of that game made a game that, as I understand it, is basically that gameplay, but with uh, 40k, where you're playing as orcs. And it's called Shooters, Blood, and Teeth. Making a goofy game for the orcs is perfect. Because for them, like, fighting people is just having a good time. Come on, main wing. There you are. I guess I already got those. I'm definitely Oh, 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 maybe that's it. Drat. It's maybe over here, right? Where it's touching the engine of the spill is uh, messing over. I said that wrong. Aha! Main wing clean. Let's ruin it. that it doesn't actually connect huh it's probably bad maybe they literally so not literally maybe they intentionally disconnected it when they got here you know for this purpose maybe it locks into place when you've uh, selected your weapons and such I feel like I just wall ran there that would have looked weird in third person oh I believe I got a comment on the subject of this, this reflection here. Uh, where did it go? Ah, yes, shout out to Elthwar, who says, Minor thought, but considering this story, could that uh, actually be Engine Seer Power Wash's eyes? I wouldn't be surprised if some tech priests have installed flashlights in their bodies, and honestly, I, yeah, yeah, I can totally see that. Also, just a lighter, cheerier subject, some of the tech priests are noted in the Kane series to build automated scout devices, whose description is extremely close to that of a Roomba, down to how they maneuver around obstacles. <clears throat> and that in Adeptus Mechanicus shrines, uh, they're often overrun by these devices that the priests insist that they don't use as mechanical pets, regardless of how they treat them and seem attached to them. <laughs> that is really silly, and I like that. It does make me worry that the Roombas have uh, skulls in them or something. It's crazy to me that like the brainwashing, lobotomized, uh, what are they called, uh, servitors, are seen as the lesser of two evils compared to uh, using proper AI. In fairness, this is a universe that where the humans have survived a machine uprising. Oh, I got it. Curses. Why is it jumping all over the place like that? Hmm, that 
Don't love that. Don't love that either. I hit L right there to in an attempt to aim down sights. I haven't even played anything lately where you aim down sights. There you go. You know, it has just occurred to me, though, that uh, this is a game where you can... <laughs> so it, just, it just strikes me as funny that this is the same game with the Santa's Workshop thing, and, it, and here we are in fucking 40k. Oh yeah, look at all that grime coming right off. Grime and carbon deposits. I suppose it doesn't really make any sense for the engine exhaust to have soot on the outside, but it was black just around the tip, so... You know, I was thinking about the lawsuit between uh, Blizzard and uh, Warhammer. Or a Games Workshop, even. I was just thinking to myself, it's not like they could even pretend... Like, you know, I, I thought it was interesting there was a theory in there uh, somewhere that uh, Warcraft 1 started out as a RTS adaptation of Warhammer Fantasy. And, uh... I was just thinking to myself, I seem to remember... I can't remember if it was Warcraft 2 or 3. I just remember if you click on a dwarf enough times... You know, like this character standing there with a big, like, actual war hammer, because it's a, a medieval fantasy setting. And I remember if you click on that guy enough times, he'll, like, make a joke and go... It, it, it was like, you see this war hammer? It cost 40k. All proud of himself. See how bad things have gotten when, uh, friggin' Blizzard were the good guys, huh? Well, they used to be awesome, I should say. Inside, shouldn't I? Er, uh. Not quite the right angle, but I can get a lot of it. Oh, 
god, I've suddenly had a thought, like, out of nowhere, I've suddenly had the thought, oh, you could probably make a really inappropriate uh, joke making, like, a roguelike, where, you know, one of those games where you die at the end of every run, and you're playing as a lamenter, <laughs> who seem to be cursed with uh, legitimately supernatural bad luck. sound and I climb the ladders. Is that normally the case, or is that just for the tech priest? Like, am I climbing it with my fucking arms or something? Oh, no, wait, no, that's right, I got the backpack with the, the, the arquebus instead of the arms. What am I doing? I don't jump over there. I was over there. Take that, heretical dirt! I wouldn't be surprised, as I say that, that if there really was a, uh, a story from 40k about how, oh, even the soil of this planet was turned evil. Nice. The exhaust taken care of next uh, time on Let's Clean Power Wash Simulator. I'll be finishing off this engine just here. And then, I don't know, probably going on to that attack wing. Let's look on the other side. Dreadful! Let's not think about the other side. <laughs> oh god. I mean, it does. I mean, it is technically less than half. But yes, I'm Burning Dogface, and I will see you next time. I'm going to get more of this ship cleaned up. Bad place to stand for that. And maybe earn ourselves a few commendations. Maybe even another promotion, so we can really stick it to Tyros. <laughs> uh, take care, Burning Dog fans. Later. <laughs>